I just wanted to do a demo where I really show the inks that went through their paces because Dawn, I'm, I'm so delighted with these inks. They are really beautiful and what they you are. can do with them is is amazing you're going to be amazed let's see let's see so i'm going to start with the bed i've got my list of what to do no problem. There's, there's so much to do i forget what it is but basically i've got some here i'm using bockingford which is a really nice quality uh watercolor paper but actually this technique works with any paper okay. that can take moisture so as long as you're using preferably a watercolor one because then you'll be fine yes so i've i've do we need a big brush? Do we have to use a big brush? I use a big brush. If you're doing a big piece, yes, you need a big okay. brush. But of course, this technique works with, you know, you can do it in little squares and things, yeah. which I've got lots of samples. Um, and then what I'm going to do, we've got a little pipette in the top of our yeah. inks um, and you just drop bubbles. OK. And I'm using... What colour um, is that you're using? Just... I'm using saffron saffron which is the yellow details are on the side of the screen you can pick and mix and choose any two for that fabulous prize. Uh, this is raspberry crush oh raspberry what lovely names aren't they mel picks the names well done mel um, like now names. now historically you've got to remember to put the lids on because yes. because they are so pigmented if you spill them um You've they stain for a while yeah. <laughs> and marigold so more of an orange there we go and then i actually wanted to add this is my favourite colour. I think this is the one that gets overlooked all the time because it's called deep grey. And when you look at it, it kind of almost looks black. Yeah, like the, a slate, a dark yeah, and slate. And you think, oh, no, I, I'm never going to use that. I love this one. It's great with every single colour, but you only need a tiny, tiny why? bit. Why do you think it's great? It just gives that balance? Um, it's just a lovely contrast for the bright. Okay. Um, it's great for shade. It's great for adding. If you want to darken, oh, right. like, say, say you've got a green yeah. and you want to make it darker, just add a bit of, of the deep okay. grape. Um, so I'm just checking that I've still got my water over my pad. Right, now watch this. I'm going to do this one. And then this is the last one. And as I come down here, I'm going to catch. Oh, wow. So just be confident. Yeah, just go for it. Now, at home, I would just leave that. And you think, oh, that's not going to travel very far. If I left that and I, I never force dry it, yeah. I let it do its own thing, that will slowly spread up through my page. So should we leave that one and then come back to well, that? Well, you could do. Or what we can do, I can just show how you can oh, right. extend oh, okay. it if you want wow. to. And I've got some brilliant samples to show what we do with wow. this. It's like when you see them lava lamps come into life yeah, and you get the yeah. bubbles and everything starts to move. Yeah. But the shades that yeah. you've got in there. But the intensity of it as well. Yeah. I mean, that's di diluted with water. I mean, what I can do, let's, let's do half of it. We okay. can spritz it. So we can spread this a bit further and that dilutes it down. I, I love these shapes. Yeah. And as it dries, these shapes will move. That's not how it's going to end up. Fabulous. But by moving it around. So would you normally just do it and just let it go on its own, or I, would you agitate it a bit? And I, do, it? I do. I do. And yeah. I'll show. I'll show you what. I've got some dry ones, oh, but I'll show. Fab. You, but I mean, look at that. And this then can it's become like flames and everything. Yeah. If isn't I can it? just get this one just to show yep. you. Yep. This with some artwork on it can become a scene. <gasps> All that was was just wow. I literally did water and then dropped some pigment on, and then with a bit of artwork. To me, this suggests trees. Yeah. But if you're doing something like Mira and the Podfather with the right colours, this becomes like the, the water Yeah, you can have coral yeah. at the bottom yeah, 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 yeah. and then the stack. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, we might be able to use this one for our five o'clock show, but yeah. I'll just put this to one side. I want to show you another technique. We're going to do that. So we'll leave that one. And like we're like cooking, aren't we? We'll yeah. put that one in the oven and we'll come back to that one. Yeah. Now, the other th top tip is I, when I'm at home, I have lots of jars of water. Okay. I, have a, I have a jar for yellow, jar for dark, yes. jars for green, jars for reds. Because if you look at my water here... It's a bit muddy. Because, well, it's because the inks are so intense. I've just put my brush in there once after doing that and it transfers. So right. you wouldn't want to use yellow and then use that water, water for yellow again. because okay. you won't, you won't, yeah, it won't work. Well, it will work, but it will just be a dirty colour. You can actually see it here. It's painting with brown rather than yellow but anyway that's, that's brilliant top tips like this are always so so handy but you've got to be using watercolor cardstock for this because honestly if you don't you are not going to get the you know the color going where you want it to is this oh is this a raspberry this is the raspberry i mean look at that they look like roses yeah, and, don't they? and they're great for doing flowers and if you wanted to stop this spread you could force dry it. Okay. I, I I rarely force dry because I just 
It's such a surprise, yeah. you know, when you come to it. This is the dark one. But you could die cut these out yeah. and all sorts. Yeah, you yeah, could, yeah. Butterflies would look fabulous dies cut out of this as well. well this is quite interesting when you put them sort so of depend on if you drop it high or yeah, low well that yeah, make yeah. a difference yeah it effect. does and also if you put them next to each other they sort of <gasps> cause a, like a little bit of a barrier Snip. so this time I'm spraying and I kind of want this sort of spotted effect on okay it. Um, and this time I'm actually going to use my brush and just oh so you can use less so you put that yeah. in what a little palette yeah just in my palette yeah like that um, and let's just add it to the water so and it sort of it kind of um, uh, becomes spidery yeah so and you don't always have to do a big piece then you know it's just do a do little piece. tiny piece so please don't think you've always got to use a three size little bits like this look at this it's like little tiny birds in the sky or something yeah. or like with a coral yeah but it just spreads and spreads and spreads it you need a bit of patience to actually see it do its yeah. thing um, and then actually Maria, um, she showed, well, she told me a technique. I tried it this morning. Yeah. She does this technique with the stencils. Yeah. Um, and what she does is she puts the stencil on the paper, spritzes the water and okay. then does this technique, just drops it on. Oh, wow. So you get this sort of shaping going on. That's and then you nice. can put your stencil back on, spritz it in more water and it will spread even more. But Great. I mean, look at that. Look at you, that. I love that. It's